Hello everyone. This is a brief overview of the new features that are included in Vapor's most recent release, version 3.5.0. Just to recap what Vapor is, is that Vapor is a 3D visualization and analysis tool used for rendering geophysical data. It's available on OS X, uh, CentOS, Ubuntu, and Windows, and it's also open source so you can download, modify, and contribute to the code base yourself. So that being said, let's jump into the new features. The first thing I'll do is go down and scroll at the bottom and you can see I'm using an OS X uh, installation, but if I go down to my taskbar, I click on the V, um, 3.5. The first thing you'll notice is our new notification board. Um, on startup, if you choose to, uh, enable this notice board, you can see announcements for tutorials, um, surveys uh, that we're trying to elicit requirements from, new releases, and, and that kind of thing. In the notice board we have right now, you can see that we're asking for feedback uh, for Vapor 3.6. So up here we talk about Vapor 3.6 is coming out after 3.5, and we're trying to elicit new requirements from the users. So if there's a requirement that you'd like to see in Vapor uh, 3.6, you can download 3.5 and uh, access the survey through the window, but I'll also put a link down in the description about how to fill out the survey so that we can get your feedback and implement what it is our users are trying to um, accomplish. So there's our new notice board. I'll go ahead and close that. The second feature I'd like to talk about is one of our new data readers. In this release, we have two new data readers, but the first one I'm going to talk about is called a BOV data reader. And a BOV file is basically just a, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a two component set. You have a description file that contains metadata for how a binary data file is being stored. So if you're generating your data as just a series of floating point or double precision floating point values in one file, just uh, one value uh, and, an, and another value and another value going along your x, y, and z axes, and it's all just raw binary data, um, this is one of your, the ways that you can get your data into Vapor. But you need more than just a binary data file, you also need a metadata file that describes the structure of how your uh, your binary data file needs to be read into Vapor. And so just to uh, kick this off, I'll go ahead and click on File, Import, and if you're familiar with Vapor, this is how you import your data, File Menu, Import, and then you can import uh, WORF, NetCDF, Impasse, and now we have this new Brick of Values reader, so I'll click on that. And I have a demonstration set up um, ahead of time that's already been configured, so I'll go to my BOV files directory, and then I have a demo directory. And you can see that I have a, a, a set of files, too. 100.bov, which is very small, 147 bytes. And then 100.bin, which is the actual series of uh, binary data that I'm trying to load into Vapor. So we can go ahead and click on 100.bov, which is the metadata descriptor file, which is going to reference my 100.bin binary file. And so now we have uh, the data loaded, and I can go ahead and create um, a wireframe renderer, for example. And you can see um, I named it 100.bov because it's a data set that's 100 um, data points along the uh, z, the x, and the y axes. Um, but let's take a little bit of a closer look. So I'm in my demo folder right now where I loaded my data, and I can do an ls-l, and we have my two files, 100.bin, which we can see is um, 800, uh, 8, or 8 million bytes, 8 megabytes, and then 100.bov. So if I take a closer look, this is, again, my metadata file that describes the structure of 100.bin. So I will do a vi on 100.bov, and we can see some of the um, descriptors. And I'll po point a link to uh, more thorough documentation on all of this in the description of this video. But 
my 100.bov file consists of a time field, um, which is um, kind of arbitrary. I think it's seconds past uh, 2000 or some other uh, crucial date in history. Um, I forget at the moment. But um, another field that we have is data file. And this is what points vapor to the, uh, the binary data file. So if I, um, if I exit out, if you remember, I'll do an ls dash, let's do a clear, ls dash l again. I loaded the 100.bov file, and that 100.bov file is referencing 100.bin. So if I look back at 100.bov, all you have to do is point a relative path to your binary data file, and then load your bov file. I also have to specify the data size, and uh, we can see over here, I don't know, it's kind of hard to count um, all these cells, but you can get a rough idea that we are on a, let's see, 100 by 100 by 100 grid. And the data format is of type double. You can also have floating point values or integer values. Uh, we give our variable that's associated with our binary file a name. And we can see over here in Vapor, um, we've named this variable myVar. And uh, that's associated with the value we give it in the BOV file. We also give the uh, brick that we're referencing. So we can kind of see right here we're dealing with the brick. It needs an origin in space, and this is, has to be in meters. And so the origin of this brick is 0, 0, 0, and the size is 100 by 100 by 100 meters. And if I go to my geometry tab in Vapor, we can see that on my x, y, and z axes, we're all going from 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100. So if you have raw uh, floating point data that's um, not in NetCDF format, this is an alternative. We used to, we, we, we still do support a, a tool to convert raw data to the VDC format, but the BOV reader gives us a way now to directly import it. So now that we've loaded data into Vapor, I think this is a good time to demonstrate a uh, new feature we've added called our bookmarking feature, which helps users apply bookmarks uh, to the application so that they can save certain uh, visualizations and states that they want to reference later. And so um, I guess maybe it'll be more clear if I explain it. If, if, if this happened to be what we're looking at on the screen right now, what we see right now is something that I would want to reference later and, and come back to after making changes. I can go to my edit menu and click on create bookmark. I can give it a name. Um, I'll give this a uh, name of demo uh, one. Click OK. And then so imagine that later on when I'm exploring my data, I make some changes to the renderer and maybe change some colors in a certain way. And I'd like to get back to the point at, to my, of, of my previous bookmark. I can go back to the edit menu and load that bookmark. Or let's say I, I want to save my current state. I can create another uh, bookmark, you know, two. But if I wanted to go back, I could go load demo number one under the edit menu, under load bookmark, demo number one, and then we're back to where we were previously. And if I want to jump back to where I was at first, I can load that bookmark as well. So pretty handy feature right there. The last feature that I'll talk about is another data reader that allows Vapor to read what is called particle or Lagrangian data. So to demonstrate that, I'll click on the file menu, import data collection particles. And I'll navigate to my data directory in my DCP, particle DCP directory. And um, just to mention, this is a data format that is I believe going to be uh, evolved upon into the future. Particle data is something that Vapor hasn't supported in the past. Vapor has only been able to read Eulerian simulation data, which is data that is a bunch of grid cells that um, affect each other through time during the uh, simulation. 
particle data is another simulation, a Lagrangian simulation, that can be run on top of a gridded data simulation where you track where individual magnetic or uh, mass particles travel through your domain. So this is a new format um, that I will, I will add a link to at the bottom in the description on the requirements for this format, but this is the first time, I guess, uh, in a word to say that Vapor now supports particle data, not just uh, gridded Eulerian data. So I'll select my particles, and um, again, there'll be more documentation on this developed, and the, the tool will be developed more into the future. Um, of course, I'll, I'll go back and I'll click on my uh, new renderer menu, and you can see that all of our other renderers that depend on the Eulerian grids are disabled, but my particle renderer is enabled. Click OK, enable it as usual, and then I'll, I'll maximize my window. You can see all my particles within my domain, and I can play it forward and see them travel through my domain. Um, so the last feature, aside from our, our new particle renderer, is um, the implementation of OpenMP within Vapor. It's a performance improvement. So you might not notice it, but that's kind of a good thing. If Vapor is more performant and you don't have to wait as much, um, you know, that's the, that's the whole goal with that kind of thing. So um, thanks for watching. Again, I'll add a link to our survey at the bottom for Vapor 3.6. We're trying to, again, figure out what the most important new features are. And so uh, we appreciate any feedback from any users. And um, please let us know in our uh, discussion forum. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us there. And uh, thank you again.